Welcome back everybody to the Ableton Live for Beginner series. It's been a little while since our last entry, but I had some ideas and some things that I thought all you beginners out there need to know. This video is going to be building off of all the previous episodes in the Ableton Live for Beginner series, so make sure you go back and watch all those. And the whole reason this series is even possible to be on YouTube for free is because we have a sponsor like DistroKid sponsoring the video today. I'm very excited for today's subject because we're talking about something that I do pretty much all the time when I'm making music, and that is resampling. We've talked about the basics of sampling, but what is resampling? Well, just the other day, I was writing some music, and here's what I came up with. You know, you ever have those days where you're just making music with no particular idea or genre in mind, and you just sit down and start recording loops and ideas? I don't think it sounds terribly bad at all, but I kind of don't have a purpose for this music. It's kind of almost like a TV show score. It's very like sad and droning kind of thing. So what can I do with this? If my inspiration has sort of been halted at this moment, all I've got are these seven loops playing. How do I turn this into a piece of music? And I'm ultimately trying to avoid it being a boring piece of music too. That's where resampling comes in. Whenever I get stuck on a piece of music, this is what I do. First thing we're gonna do is create a new audio track. I'm gonna hit Command T, and now we've got a new audio track. And I should point out, by the way, this is the first entry in the series where we are working in Live 12, but don't worry, everything is possible in Live 11 as well. It just might look a little different. So here in Live 12, I'm gonna go down to the bottom right and I'm gonna turn on track ins and outs so I can see the ins and outs of the track. That's this little menu right here in the center. Usually we use this when we're recording external instruments, like if we plug a guitar or a mic into an interface, we usually go and look for that particular input here in this section. But with a resampling, we're gonna be looking for a sound source from within Ableton Live. So on this new audio track, in this drop down menu, Audio From, you're gonna see that we can get audio from every single individual track. What I really wanna do though, is get audio from all of these tracks at the same time. So we're gonna group these tracks. I'm gonna click on the last track, hold shift, click on the first track to have them all selected. Then I can just right click and hit group tracks or I can hit command G to make a group. Now we have group one. I can fold that in on itself. Now in our list of sources audio from, we can find group one where now we can get audio from this entire group. Then what I'm gonna wanna do is record that. I'm gonna arm the track for recording, press record in the clip slot, making sure that this track is turned on with volume up and I'm gonna keep my monitoring off so we don't get a doubled sound. Press record and let's record this clip. All that's happening here is re recording the audio directly from group one, all these sounds are getting turned into audio here as a clip in group nine. And I'll let that play out. And we've let it play out enough. I'm gonna hit stop on all of this. Now, this group is what I call the source material. I'm gonna rename it source material. And since we're now gonna work with this new sample we just created, I'm gonna just completely mute the source material because now this is our primary piece of music that we're working with, this new clip that we just recorded. I let this record for one bar too long, so I'm just gonna shrink that down to an even eight bars, let it play back, and what you should have is the exact same sound that we just heard. Now, why bother doing this? Why not just work with all these sounds as they were? Because now we can treat this music like a sample instead of treating it like individual parts in our production. And that sort of changes how we work with things. Very simply, I can do things like now alter the pitch, which can change the vibe of the track. If I bring it down to semitones, let's hear that. That always gives it more of a lo-fi feel. Of course, you can do fun things like reverse it too. But 
well, we can do literally anything to this track now. And I just think working with a sound as if it were a sample is a totally different ball game than having control over each of the individual instruments in a track. So let's transform this a little bit more. We've already lowered the pitch by two semitones. Let's go ahead and pull some low frequencies out. Just filtering out low frequencies. Let's maybe add some reverb. And let's grab another audio effect, maybe a delay, for instance. I'll go to audio effects, delay. Let's just add 16th ping pong and see how it sounds. And I'm going to add this before the reverb, because remember we talked about the order of effects matter. I think that's pretty cool. Now we have another option here. I like to call this the resampling rabbit hole. I'm gonna create a new audio track and I'm gonna do the same thing again, now recording from track nine, all those effects we just put on this sample, including the pitch shifting. I'm gonna go ahead and record from track nine and resample this again. Why bother resampling it again? I just think that printing these effects and printing the sound to audio gives you a different way of working on the music and makes you less focused on all these individual parameters. Suddenly, everything is permanent. So now that we've recorded that new clip, this is essentially source material again. So I'm gonna to continue to add it to that group. Let's play this back. It's gonna sound exactly the same. Something I think is important that I don't think is coming across well as I'm editing this video is that the main concept we're talking about here, resampling and the resampling rabbit hole we're about to go down, this is the main process that I want you to get from this video. The little individual effects that you apply each time you go down the rabbit hole, those are up to you and there's like almost limitless opportunities there. What I'm doing is just an example, so replace that with your own experimentation. I hope that makes sense. And here's something else we can do. We can do things like change the warp mode and manipulate the sound that way. If I change to the beats warp mode and I change this little menu here, this is the transient loop mode. I'm gonna change it to this forward facing arrow and I'm gonna bring this number down. Watch what happens to the sound. we get this sort of weird stuttered sound. Now, don't forget, this is a resampling rabbit hole. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna go ahead and resample that again, but this time I'm gonna resample it while I play with that little effect. One thing to look out for, a mistake that I've been making actually, is every time I create a new audio track, I'm adding another level of compression and EQ onto this. So I'm just gonna delete that rack. You don't wanna just continuously compress and compress your sound if you have a compressor as default on your audio track. So just be aware if you're doubling down on effects every time you resample. Okay, so now again, audio from track 10. We're going to record this sound while we change that warping parameter. And I can let that continue to loop around because I'm gonna get a different sound every time as I slowly adjust this parameter with my mouse. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this sound yet. Okay, there we go. We've done that for about 16 bars and we're left with this sample here. Let's bring the gain up a little bit on that. We've got those stutters. I'm gonna add that track again to the source material pile and let's just hear what we have here. And let's perhaps send that to a... Reverb and delay. 
Now I can find parts of this that I like and mix and mangle it. And there's also a few other things that we can do with this sound. But let me go ahead and tell you about the sponsor for today's video, DistroKid. It's going to be really quick. I promise. Just check it out. DistroKid sponsor for today's video. Look, this whole resampling thing, it's not something I'm just talking about in theory. It's something that I do a lot. And I've got a bunch of samples in my sampling folder that have just come out of this process where I just take a sound, manipulate it and transform it into a full track. And I just finished doing this process with the release of my new album, Conditions Where the Future Can't Be Delivered. And when I was finally finished with the music, I needed a pain-free way to get my music to all the places where you all listen to the music. And I used DistroKid, of course, for that. And I've been using DistroKid since well before they ever sponsored the channel because I really like the idea of just paying one time per year and uploading as much music as possible. They also have a lot of great tools for the artists. In fact, the link that I'm using to promote my music is something that's provided by DistroKid and it includes all the places that the music has been posted, all the streaming services, and I can add links to that. So if I want to add a link to my own website, I can go ahead and do that as well. That's Hyperlink by DistroKid. They also just sent me a promo card in the email when my album dropped as a way of promoting my album that day. So I thought that was nice. All in all, it is a really easy, pain-free way of getting your music out there. I've been using it for my entire time as Tatro. So if you need a way to get your music onto all the places that your music needs to be, that's Spotify, Apple Music, TikTok, Instagram, use DistroKid, get 7% off. The link is in the description. And when you use that link, it does help to support the channel. Get your music out there, 7% off. Link is in the description. Thanks once again to DistroKid for making this series possible. Back to the resampling rabbit hole. All right, so what is even the point of all this? We haven't even made like a proper track yet. We've kind of just kept manipulating the audio and resampling and resampling, resampling. I have a lot of fun doing this. I feel like I could just do this all day, but ultimately you probably want to get it to being a usable part of a track eventually, right? Here's one thing we can do with this kind of stuttery audio that we ended up with. Obviously, a lot of it is not in time. We could go ahead and quantize this actually command U and snap it all to the grid. Another fun thing to try is changing the delay timing while you're resampling. Now we can capture all that repitching that's happening as we change that setting on the delay. Not something we usually capture, but awesome to resample. If I was going to stop here and say, OK, I'm feeling satisfied with this sample, all I would do is rename it and call this like stuttery resample demo. Then I would freeze and flatten the track. So then now all those changes are baked into the audio, those warping changes. And now I can reveal where this file is in Finder. Now it's just here as a sample, right? What I've gotten into the habit of doing is taking weird, fun sample ideas like this and putting it into a sampling folder. This sampling folder just holds a bunch of random samples that I can go back to and reference. I did this a lot when making my album. I just have a sampling folder that all I have to do is go listen to these. And what it ultimately amounts to is a bunch of resampled sounds. like that. Like I have no idea what that is, but I can turn it into something at any time. And ultimately what we're doing here is building up our own sample library. And let's not forget, there's a lot of other things you can do with audio that you can't do with all those collections of MIDI tracks. What I can do now is let's say warp this again. And now I can slice this to a new MIDI track, slice it by warp marker. And now I can come up with even more ideas with these sliced samples like this. Another thing to try is recording a short sound with a ton of reverb. And now we can take that short sample, put it into simpler, reversed, and that long reverb tail becomes a nice swell. So using resampling, going down the resampling rabbit hole is a really easy way, I think, to get yourself out of a rut. If you've composed some music and you don't even know what to do with it or it doesn't fit your style, turn it into a sample, add some effects to it, 
tweak it, resample it again, and continue further and further down that rabbit hole until you come up with something interesting that you like. Even if you don't know what to do with it in that moment, start a sampling folder, save it in there, and pull it out when you're looking for some inspiration next time. Thank you once again to DistroKid for sponsoring today's video. I hope you enjoyed this next segment of the Ableton Live for Beginners series. I hope you've enjoyed the series in general. I hope to continue to add to it as I have more and more ideas to stack on top. I see many of you talking about how you've made a lot of progress after the series great job congrats to you you're taking on music you're doing like self-guided music lessons when you could be paying thousands and thousands of dollars at a music school which nobody wants you to do if you want to take the next step and get feedback on some of your music you can join our community click the join button down below the video it's a way to support the channel join a discord community we do feedback streams that you can submit music to there's free sample packs to download there's members only workshops that are educational deeper dives into really important topics for musicians and overall it's just good vibes over here click the join button if you want to support the channel and make sure that i can continue to make these videos it really helps a lot plus get to be like all these cool people with your name in the credits. That is going to be it for now. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.